Walls in competitive Pokemon are an archetype seen across every single generation. A wall is a Pokemon that is powerful enough defensively to act as a blockade against the enemy's offensive pressure, usually through healing or sheer bulk, keeping them out and preventing them from overwhelming your team, just like a wall. Many players dislike these Pokemon and find them frustrating to play against, but they serve an important purpose in competitive singles. Flashy and exciting offensive gameplay can only exist if there are defensive options to overcome. The process of breaking down a wall is strategic and requires a solid game plan. The push and pull between offense and defense is the heart of competitive singles, and the best formats in the franchise often have a good balance between both. Let's take a look at the defensive walls of every single Pokemon generation and how they define the competitive experience in each. Subscribe to the channel so that I can finally put Iron Mugulus where he belongs, permanently ending his reign of terror. Thank you. In Generation 1, the absolute most definitive wall in the game, and perhaps the most classic wall of all time, is Chansey. And it is pretty simple to understand what makes this Pokemon so good. It has a enormous 250 base HP stat and a very powerful special stat considering the sheer amount of HP, 703 HP that it has. Along with that, it has all the utility you could ask for. It has an immediate healing move in the form of Soft Boil, Thunder Wave to cripple enemies with status, and options such as Ice Beam and Thunderbolt to even apply a bit of offensive pressure. I mean, it has 105 special. That's also special attack. It can dish out some respectable damage too. But Chansey isn't just a special wall in Gen 1, it can also kind of be a physical wall if it happens to be using Reflect. In Generation 1, Reflect works very differently than it does later. It is not a screen that fades after 5 turns, supporting your entire team, doubling every Pokemon's defense on your team temporarily. Rather, Reflect doubles the user's defense and it's just a buff that stays there until you switch out. It's permanent until you switch out. Very useful when Chansey is up against enemies like Tauros and Snorlax and Rhydon, physical attackers. In Generation 1, normal types are actually immune to Body Slam's 30% paralysis chance. It cannot take effect against normal types, making normal a really strong defensive type. Just a new good neutral type. It has no weaknesses that are relevant. Fighting types are nowhere to be seen. And that immunity to Body Slam Paralysis is extremely relevant, especially when Tauros Body Slam Spam and other miscellaneous Body Slam users are everywhere. It's one of the most popular moves in the game. So Chansey is the ultimate wall. It is the key enemy Pokemon that you have to break through. It's also on every single Gen 1 team, basically. It's like an inevitability. Walls in competitive Pokemon have to be a little bit more than just a wall that soaks hits. They have to be able to do something to the enemy that's attacking them. Usually that is in the form of status moves or sometimes attacks, but usually status moves. And Chansey can do both of these things. It has good coverage options, a great selection of status moves with Thunder Wave and even Sing to put the enemy to sleep. Chansey might even be the Pokemon that defined this archetype the most, with its infamous reputation in Gen 1 for being almost invincible in some games. Another very common wall in Generation 1 is Starmie. Starmie is often viewed as an offensive Pokemon in the later games, with its high speed and great offensive coverage options, but in Gen 1 it's more of a defensive Pokemon. It does still have that offensive firepower with a respectable 100 special stat and, you know, Ice Beam, Psychic, Thunderbolt, Surf, good special attacking options, but the main purpose of Starmie is to sit there for hours, recover, paralyze stuff, fish for Ice Beam freezes as well. Ice Beam freeze is a big deal in Gen 1 because you cannot thaw out in Gen 1. Being able to passively sit there and click Ice Beam is one of the Premier strategies in the generation. Recover, having 32 PP is significant in Gen 1 games that can sometimes be a bit stalemate and go for a long time. Starmie is a bit frail when compared to Chansey, so is everything, but it does have that low health and it can get broken through by things like Body Slam Paralysis into Hyper Beam from Tauros and other such high base power stab moves, electric coverage as well, but there's no doubt that Starmie has incredible defensive capabilities in Gen 1 and is one of the best walls in the format. Snorlax is kind of a Pokemon that calls the definition of wall into question. Is this a wall or is it a bulky attacker? It's not got, you know, an immediate safe healing move like Soft World to recover. It doesn't have status moves or stuff like that. It has high attack. 
It is a wall breaker itself with body slam, stab, and hyper beam and stuff like that. So is this a wall or is it an attacker? Well, I think it is both in Gen 1. I think it's just that powerful that it can do both. With the sheer HP stat this guy has and the, the power of normal typing, it's kind of like a second chancy in its defensive capabilities. The sheer bulk that this represents is going to form, form a blockade against the enemy's offense. It simply is. Especially when it's running Reflect, which is going to do a similar thing to Reflect Chansey. In fact, with higher defense, this is even more sturdy against those physical attackers than Chansey is. Rest is not the greatest move in Gen 1 because the turn that you wake up is also a turn where you can't act. In later generations, this was changed with the turn that you wake up, you will use the move that you clicked. But waking up also expends a turn in Gen 1. Snorlax is a Pokemon that can afford to just sit there and rest and wait it out because it's that bulky, especially with a reflect up. Even when a resting Snorlax is just sitting there, not achieving anything, it's hard to actually apply enough pressure to it to, to break the guy. So not all sets use rest though, I should clarify that. Some sets operate differently. Snorlax can be more wall tech if it's running reflect and rest. And then sometimes you run like self-destruct earthquake all attacks and then you're more of a bulky attacker. So depends on the set with Snorlax, but a set like this with reflect and rest does serve the purpose of a wall in Gen 1. Alakazam is yet another Pokemon that can kind of do both. It is both a fast offensive threat and a wall at the same time. I mean, with a special stat of 135, that is incredibly bulky and this is gonna be difficult to break through for any special attacker whatsoever. And also, Alakazam gets reflect too. It gets recover. It gets thunder wave to cripple enemies and with psychic stab, it can even pose a threat at the same time. This is one of Gen 1's best Pokemon, and it is kind of everything at once. It is a fast special threat. It is a wall breaker thanks to Psychic Special Drop Chance. Alakazam is everything at once, including a wall. I will say that because it's not a mono normal type, it is vulnerable to those body slam paralysis effects. Unlike Chansey and Snorlax, the other two Reflect users. So Reflect Alakazam is not my favorite set. I'm not a huge fan of that one, but it is a set that exists and it is a difficult one to break through on certain things. Cloyster is perhaps the most reliable line of defense against physical attackers in Gen 1 with its enormous 180 base defense stat. This is an example of a wall that can operate in that role through sheer bulk alone pretty much. It actually lacks the utility and healing and other options like that that define other walls like Chansey and Alakazam and Stami, but it does have rest at least. It's a bit worse at using rest than something like Snorlax because I think it suffers more from the turns that it has to sit there doing nothing. It just has Blizzard, which is decent damage. It's respectable. Not as impactful as something like a Thunder Wave, but still Cloyster is a really difficult Pokemon to face when you're trying to win with Tauros or Rhydon or physical threats such as that. I thought I'd give a shout out to Rhydon, even though it may not quite classify as a wall. It doesn't have a healing move and it's not particularly sturdy because of its type weaknesses. It's really more of a Tauros check that applies offensive pressure afterwards. It has very high attack and defense. So it can come in against Tauros's normal type attacks and pose quite a threat after that. But both Tauros and Snorlax, the two things it most likes to defensively come in on, have ways to threaten it significantly, like with Earthquake or Blizzard or Ice Beam or Surf. I would consider Rhydon more of a bulky attacker. I thought it was worth shouting out. It's a relevant defensive Pokemon in Gen 1. And finally, we've got Porygon, who has a little bit of a niche in Gen 1 OU. As kind of a second chancy almost, it has all the... Same tools with Recover, Thunder Wave, Reflect, these important walling tools, but obviously much worse defensively. But being a normal type with all of these great utility options has its value. It can wall enemies like Snorlax and Tauros if given the right opportunity. And having an extra wall against those fellows is very useful, like a second mini Chansey. In Generation 2, Rest became a far better option for healing, and because of that, a lot of new walls were pushed to the forefront and made even more effective. First of all, you could now wake up and act on the turn that you wake up from Rest, and Sleep Talk was introduced, an all-new mechanic allowing you to use a random move in your kit while you're asleep, a very significant new tool. In Generation 2, you can also call Rest from Sleep Talk to heal back up again. In later generations, this was changed and you cannot do that anymore if you sleep talk and call rest it will fail but generation 2 that's not the case and of course in generation 2 the premier pokemon in the game is snorlax and this thing is a wall to end all walls its special bulk was buffed even further in generation 2 with the addition of the all-new special defense stat for the time it's 110 which complements 
160 base HP, incredibly. The only option, Curse, which boosts defense, means that Snorlax is able to achieve bulk on every end of the spectrum. It's able to heal reliably and do stuff while sleeping. So this is the ultimate wall in the format. It also gets a huge amount of value from Leftovers, which heals a percentage of your max HP, which 1 16th of Snorlax's enormous HP is a lot of healing. The whole crux of Gen 2 Ryu is getting through the enemy's Snorlax is the most important thing you can do, and sometimes that's a Herculean task. It requires multiple Pokemon and everything in the world working in your favor. Snorlax is of course not just a wall, it's also a bulky attacker, a sweeper, a mixed attacker, everything at once. Zapdos operates very much as a wall in Gen 2 as well, thanks to Rest and Sleep Talk. Rest and Sleep Talk just represents so much healing and Zapdos has pretty nice defensive typing with few weaknesses and it can often threaten the things that pose a threat to it, which is very nice. Moves have a lower base power in Gen 2 overall, so Zapdos is very difficult to break through. It can heal fully. Heal status as well is another aspect of Rest that makes it great, is that if you're toxic or burned or paralyzed, Rest just puts you to sleep, replacing the previous status ailment and then healing you when you wake up effectively. Rest Talk turns a lot of things into walls through just how powerful it is in the generation, right? Cloyster operates in a similar way, largely as a Snorlax check thanks to its high defense, but it's a lot better as a wall in Generation 2 than it was in Generation 1. It benefits greatly from leftovers, giving it some form of passive healing. It doesn't really use rest in this generation, but it has way more utility in ways to make permanent progress like spikes and Toxic is a bit more effective in Gen 2 than it was in 1, and Rapid Spin to remove enemy spikes as well. So Cloyster, despite not having a direct way to heal most of the time, usually doesn't run rest. It sticks around a lot, and it is a real point of frustration for enemy Snorlax gamers. Raikou is very similar to Zapdos with Rest Sleep Talk. Notably, it resists Electric, making it a wall against Zapdos, which is very useful. It also has a little bit more special defense than Zapdos does. And it's faster. Not much to say really, it's kind of Zapdos 2, but with slightly different traits. It does a very similar thing, rest talk and then some stab and some coverage. Miltank debuted in Gen 2, and this is a pretty nice wall in the metagame. It has respectable defensive stats, an immediate healing move, which is a bit more scarce in Gen 2. Most things rely on rest because of rest sleep talk being so powerful, but Miltank can actually take advantage of milk drink and heal bell as a way to handle status and provide a bit of support to your team. It can also one v1 Snorlax with Growl, lowering its attack, and with 61 PP, this is going to be able to sit there for a very, very long time against Snorlax. And Body Slam is a nice stab attack that also has the benefit of spreading some paralysis. This is a nice Gen 2 wall, a bit more niche than the previous ones mentioned so far, but I think it's quite good. Skarmory also debuted in Generation 2, one of the premier defensive walls in Pokemon history that would have a place in many, many generations to come. It doesn't even have spikes in this generation yet, which is its defining trade later on, but even in Gen 2 without spikes, the steel flying typing, the massive defense, this is maybe the best physical wall in the game, the best Snorlax check there is with resistance and immunity to common attacks, the ability to whirlwind out Snorlax, removing the curse boosts, the ability to curse itself and match boosts, act as a bit of a win condition itself sometimes, and rest for healing. Chansey also gained a new evolution in Generation 2, Blissey, who would go on to become the classic special wall of the franchise moving forward. It's basically chancy, but even better with a higher special defense stat and a little bit higher in the HP and special attack departments as well. Blissey is not as commonly seen in Gen 2, mostly because it gets outclassed by Snorlax, who provides similar bulk to teams, but is just more powerful and useful usually. But on some stalled teams, you do see Blissey occasionally for its immediate healing, access to heal, bell, and uh, just incredible bulky presence. You also sometimes see this guy run present, which is funny because it has a random chance to have a million power, which can help you break through stuff, I think. That's a funny little quirk. I think that this, this move was removed later on, something you don't see every day. And a quick shout out to Suicune in Gen 2. It is ranked in OU. I'm not a huge fan of using Suicune in Gen 2. Not only is it extremely passive, but it's also weak to electric, which is a big deal in the format where Zapdos and Raikou are everywhere. Compared to the other bulky water type Cloyster, it has worse utility and it's not as good against Snorlax. Cloyster can actually exploit Snorlax a little bit more and get more value against it. Suicune kind of just sits there resting and sleep talking. It does have incredible defensive stats, massive HP, defense and special defense, and everything other than 
snow like Zapdos and Raikou can really struggle to break through this guy. But this is an already extremely slow metagame. I'm not going to slow it down anymore by running Suicune myself. You can do as you wish, folks, if you want to. In Generation 3, things change significantly with the introduction of mechanics such as passive abilities, EVs, and of course, the addition of Sandstorm, which had a massive impact. Rest and Sleep Talk also didn't work the same way anymore, so Rest and Sleep Talk are a little bit more exploitable and passive and punishable. The king of Gen 3 in terms of recovery is Chip Heal. Anything that's immune to Sandstorm and has Protect, Leftover's Chip Healing is a huge deal here and Skarmory is the prime example of this. Already a powerful defensive piece in Generation 2, the ability to stack three layers of spikes. Now it is the premier spikes setter, which is one of the most central ideas in the format. Toxic is also much better in Generation 3 with mechanic changes. And when you're setting more spikes on the field, Roar is a more powerful tool as well. Against unprepared teams, Skarmory will be invincible, rack up spikes, roar you around, spread status, and be just indestructible. Every team needs some sort of plan against Skarmory. It is one of the top of the top Pokemon in the metagame. It does have a big target on its back as a result, with Magneton teams being a premier archetype in the format for their ability to trap and eliminate this pesky bird. A lot of fire and electric coverage is used to threaten Skarmory on various Pokemon, and Focus Punch is a common way to deal large damage and punish the passive nature of Skarmory, but there's no denying this is the most powerful wall in Gen 3 OU. In Generation 2, Blissey wasn't the best, and it was outclassed by Snorlax, but here Blissey is a lot better than Snorlax. The changes to rest, soft boiled is much more of a desirable recovery option, immediate direct healing, and the ability Natural Cure was also an incredible buff. Natural Cure will heal Blissey's status ailment as it switches out, giving it a free and passive form of status recovery, not requiring it to run Heal Bell and spend it every time it wants to get rid of status. Blissey is definitely punished by the addition of Sandstorm chip damage, which cuts its leftovers healing, but it's one of the Pokemon bulky enough to function defensively despite spikes and sand pressuring it. There are also way more relevant special attackers now with offensive tools becoming better and more Pokemon to actually wall. Blissey is a lot more useful. I also think this generation is where Blissey was the coolest. I don't think Blissey feels that annoying to play against in this generation. There are a lot of ways to pressure Blissey with 101 health substitutes that can tank a hit from Seismic Toss and overwhelm Blissey. Mixed threats being a very relevant part of Gen 3 OU and a great way to pressure Blissey. This Pokemon lacks phasing and it doesn't have every possible tool on Earth. It does have a lot going for it. It has a lot of value it can generate, but it can be taunted, exploded on, hit with a surprise focus punch from many Pokemon. There's a lot of ways to break through Blissey and Blissey's options are also a bit more interesting, I think, in Gen 3 than other generations. You're incentivized to run special attacks on Blissey more in Gen 3 than other games, because you need to be able to hold your own against Dugtrio. If you don't have modest and full special attack investment, a Dugtrio will be able to trap you and eliminate you. But with Ice Beam, you have a way to hit them back. You can also check Salamence with that and Prussia Celebi a little bit more. And you have a lot of coverage options that are really cool, like Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt. Even Hidden Power Grass can be cool to hit Swamp It. You have such options as Counter that can go well. Snatch, and you can even run Calm Mind on Blissey to turn it into a win condition itself. Blissey has so many options, so many ways to play with it and against it in Gen 3. Melodic is perhaps the purest wall in Gen 3. It's a classic wall. It is a bulky guy that clicks recover and toxic and sits there and heals repeatedly and that's what it does. It has great bulk with 125 base special defense, mono water typing you can't go wrong with. Melodic is fantastic against mixed threats who commonly run fire grass fighting as a coverage combination and a weak non-stab hidden power grass is not very threatening to Melodic especially with its fantastic base special defense so something like a mixed Salamence, mixed Tyranitar or even Charizard are not going to be very effective against Melodic. Melodic can also wall enemies like Salamence and Metagross. The issue with Melodic is that some people call this Pokemon a Hax Magnet, a Pokemon that requires itself to repeatedly heal and spam recover is eventually going to invite things to happen such as critical hits, secondary effects, 
flinches, mash attack rays, these kinds of things, because it's constantly looping and sitting there for a long time, so eventually the enemy's gonna get lucky and break through you. This is where walls can be taken advantage of and punished. This is definitely an example of a wall that can suffer from its own passive defensive nature. Swampert is one of the most powerful defensive Pokemon in the game, and it's not quite as passive as Melodic is. It can actually hit pretty hard. It has a good base 110 attack and 85 special attack. Sometimes offense is a good defense, they say. It's also damn sturdy. It's got a water ground typing, one of the best type combinations ever. With only a single weakness to grass, it gets a lot of value out of that chip healing and it is the most effective check against Tyranitar and Aerodactyl, as well as physical Metagross and Salamid sets. So Swampert is an incredible all-in-one defensive wall against the premier physical attackers of the format, but this is a more standard Swampert set, but the Pokemon's very customizable, and you can even go even more defensive with it using something like this, which has Refresh to even be able to cure status. The ability to just sit there against a lot of stuff that would otherwise pressure it. This can actually wall Blissey and other such fellows with complete immunity. Well, not immunity, but an answer to status. I've said many times that I think Swampert is the perfect defensive Pokemon design, and this should be the blueprint for all defensive Pokemon. This is ideal. Good at its job, but it has clearly defined and exploitable weaknesses in the sense that it has no direct recovery, like Soft World Recover and other such moves, and it has a times for grass weakness, it can't fit everything on its set, it has to pick and choose its tools, which allows for, you know, creative team building, mixing and matching of options. It can lean offensively or defensively depending on the pace of your team. It can operate at any pace, it can fit on various styles. It is not unreasonable to deal with, it doesn't feel annoying to play against. This is a beautiful Pokemon all around. Another fantastic defensive Pokemon in Gen 3 is Jirachi, who can provide your team with wish support. It can spread a status in the form of Serene Grace Body Slam, which has a 60% paralysis chance. And Fire Punch can also spread burn. This is a rare, you know, special or defensive physical wall that is immune to Sandstorm, which is very valuable. It's not quite as defensively sturdy as Blissey is. Blissey has better stats. Blissey has direct healing and Blissey has natural cure as well as more utility but Jirachi has the benefit of that valuable sand immunity and of course resistances to important enemies. It can invest in special defense and still wall an Aerodactyl locking into Rock Slide or Double Edge which is really useful. Blissey can't quite provide that but it's not as solid against status and it's also more vulnerable to Doug Trio who threatens it with super effective earthquake and can trap Jirachi. Magneton while it might not be the world's safest way to handle Jirachi, can eliminate it if it's brought low enough or if it wins a 1v1 with Thunder Wave and substitute and such options like that. Celebi is another great defensive Pokemon in Gen 3 with a lot of set diversity. It can be a completely offensive threat with Calm Mind and three attacks or Leech Seed and three attacks or Swords Dance Pass. It can pose more of an offensive threat or it can be a completely defensive utility Pokemon. It crucially has access to Leech Seed, a Fantastic move that very little can switch in against that creates guaranteed value and supports your team as well by providing healing. Really punishes Snorlax and Blissey. It has natural cure, always fantastic. Recover, best healing move in the game. 32 PP in Gen 3, incredible option. And good stamp types too. This threatens Gengar, this hits Swampert. It also has utility in the form of, you know, Heal Bell. It has Perish Song if you need to punish Boost Sweepers and other such things. It has Baton Pass if you want to pivot. It has Substitute if you want to do subseed shenanigans. Very customizable Pokemon, a lot of options. And a grass psychic typing also comes in handy. One of the most solid switch ins against Swampert and other offensive water types. It does suffer compared to Blissey, though, in the sense that Blissey has a fantastic neutral typing for a special wall, which is normal. Nothing hits Blissey super effectively on the special side, but Celebi is weak to fire and ice. Two very common special attacking types, and that is its biggest downfall in that department. On the physical side too, if it leans more as a physical wall, it's weak to bug, which is a very common coverage type in Gen 3 for its ability to hit important targets like Celebi, Stami, Claydol. A lot of fantastic utility, a lot of great options, very customizable, but its typing can be a problem for both sides of the spectrum. It doesn't quite have it all, and it's exploitable in that way. Suicune became much better in Gen 3 with the new tool of Calm Mind, and also the ability Pressure causes enemies to lose twice as much PP on their moves. 
a fantastic long-term stalling option. Suicune is a cornerstone of many defensive strategies for its ability to wall the enemy with its incredible bulk and typing. Serves the same defensive purpose as a Melodic, not quite as immediately bulky because Melodic has recovered, this only has rest, but Suicune is more of a threat than Melodic is and pressure is extremely useful to stall out options like Fire Blast that have low PP or Leech Seed, which over the course of the game can't be clicked forever as a result of pressure. Suicune can 1v1 many other things because of pressure too. Suicune is of course passive and exploitable and has move slot syndrome in a big way. It wants raw to phase out enemy calm minders that are trying to match boosts but it also wants like ice beam for coverage against dragon types and grass types that threaten it but it also wants like sleep talk to not be completely passive while it's sleeping and exploitable there. It also wants, you know, some sets run substitute, but then they can't afford a rest, probably. It can't fit everything in the world. It has a lot of moveset issues, but the sheer power of its stats and ability and typing have a lot of value, and it's a tough thing to break. Stami also serves a similar purpose to Melodic with its water typing, recover, but Stami has natural cure, and it has rapid spin, two amazing utility options. Stami is a very popular Pokemon on balance heat teams that want a rapid spinner that can reliably heal and spread paralysis. It's also a common Pokemon on para spam teams that amplify slow bulky attackers through paralysis against the enemy. And Stami is another Pokemon that's versatile in what it can do. It can be offensive or defensive. But the defensive leaning Stami sets can be very difficult to break. They have this form of counterplay against status. They have recover looping and they can invest sometimes in speed to just be able to outrun Gengar and Paralyze or threaten it with Surf, who is a common spin blocker, which is a good dynamic to have. But you can also just go like defensive investment, enhance your bulk. That's the advantage of EVs as a concept is you can specialize in a certain stat and become more bulky than you were by default. And there's a lot of niche walls I could talk about that have their value here and there. That would take me hours though. One I would like to talk about that is quite relevant is Porygon 2. One of my favorite Pokemon in the metagame who has the ability Trace. Trace allows you to copy the enemy's ability and you can even copy Arena Trap from Dugtrio. Because of this, Porygon 2 can counter trap an enemy Dugtrio. And this is something you can completely build around. Dugtrio punishes a lot of Pokemon in Gen 3, but with Porygon 2, you can give them a taste of their own medicine, eliminate their Dugtrio and all of a sudden teammates like Tyranitar, Metagross, Raikou, Blaziken, fighting types like Heracross and Breloom are very enhanced and Porygon 2 does more than just that it's also pretty sturdy defensively with decent enough bulk about 90 in all the defenses and access to recover. Trace allows you more utility too you can trace enemy abilities like Volt Absorb from a Jolteon granting you electric immunity, Levitate from a Flygon granting you ground immunity, Natural Cure from a Blizz to allow you to heal status that way and with recover and ice beam to hit salamence you're a good salamence check and wall you have thunderbolt for gyarados and water types such as stami thunder wave toxic good utility move pool really cool pokemon because it ticks a lot of boxes it's that anti dug guy but it's also a little wall that has value in other matchups too so very cool pokemon in my opinion generation 4 is an even more aggressive metagame than gen 3 was with the addition of stealth rock new items like life orb and choice and the physical special split giving more Pokemon the ability to use their primary stat. All of these things had a very big effect on the walls of the format. It is kind of harder to be a wall in Gen 4 when there are so many scary offensive tools to consider, but Skarmory still operates very well as a physical wall in Gen 3 with those same ever crucial hazards, but now it even has Roost, a new move to directly heal. I will say though that physical attackers are a bit better at breaking through Skarmory in this generation. It is affected by Stealth Rock. It was previously immune to spikes, but now there is a hazard that can affect it. And fighting type attacks and other neutral physical attacks can actually hit the guy. With the physical special split as well, fire type and electric type physical attacks exist now, so it is not completely safe against all physical attackers. There are more ways to threaten the guy, but it has the new tool of Roost to compensate for that a little bit. Blissey can still do what it does best in Gen 4 as a fantastic special wall. And it also has the new option of Stealth Rock, which is the best utility option you can get in Gen 4 and moving forward, honestly. But Blissey does still struggle with the tough environment of Gen 4, Stealth Rock and Sand punishing it. The general higher power level of all offensive Pokemon. It can actually be broken through by special threats more easily through brute force with moves like Draco Meteor now existing. 
just in general a lot more can threaten Blissey. It's not quite the absolute king of defense that it once was. But one of the most popular new defensive Pokemon in Gen 4 is Hippodon. An alternative to Tyranitar as a sand stream setter that has a lot more defensive value. With a mono ground typing, which is great defensively, direct healing with slack off, fantastic bulk, immunity to its own sand, of course, and resistance to rock, meaning stealth rock doesn't hit it that hard. And of course it has stealth rock itself. It has good utility in the form of toxic. This is one of the most popular defensive Pokemon at high level play. It is extremely consistent. It's very effective against most physical attackers in the format. It's sturdy, it sticks around, it provides so much to a team in one slot and it's I find it pretty satisfying to use. I like a mono ground typing. It just is really effective against a lot of stuff. And it also creates sand on switching in so good defensively. Pretty annoying to face though. This guy can be very tough to break. Not impossible. Gen 4 is full of offensive tools to overwhelm Hippodon. But if you don't have that breaking power, that brute force, Hippodon can give you a lot of issues. It can. Well, Fable is officially ranked in UU because I don't think that Gen 4's tiering has been updated in a long time, but don't let that fool you. Clefable is one of the top tier Pokemon in OU. It is a staple of the format and its modern metagame, and it is a favorite among professional players. And that is because of this ability right here, Magic Guard, a contender for best Pokemon ability of all time, for sure. Magic Guard grants a complete immunity to all sources of indirect damage. That includes an immunity to hazard damage, poison, burn, leech seed, everything of all time. It, it is immune to so many things, and that is incredibly valuable. Even with these pretty mediocre stats, the sheer power of this ability has pushed Clefable into the forefront of defense in Generation 4 OU. On top of being immune to so many different things, it has fantastic utility options to capitalize on it. It has knockoff, which is amazing. Removing an enemy's item in a world of permanent sand that means permanent sandstorm chip damage it's also very difficult to switch in against it has stealth rock it has thunder wave seismic toss you can also run a calm mind set it has wish which provides utility to your team in the form of a healing method its biggest flaw though is just the lower end of its stats if it had good stats we'd be in disaster territory wouldn't we? luckily you can overwhelm the guy pretty easily but being immune to all those sources of damage is just so valuable especially because toxic is often a way to pressure defensive walls and put them on a clock but doesn't work at all on clefable jirachi was also incredibly buffed in generation 4 it was already a fantastic pokemon in gen 3 but it got even better because of the addition of this move right here iron head which has a 30 percent flinch chance but now with serene grace it has a 60 percent flinch chance that is an absurdly high flinch chance this new tool propelled jirachi all the way to the absolute top tier and Jirachi, once again, has a lot of set variety. You can go Choice Scarf Jirachi with Iron Head, annoy people to death with flinches. You can go Calm Mind, no Iron Head, just Calm Mind and use it as a special attacking sweeper. But one of the sets you can use is pretty similar to that good old Generation 3 Jirachi defensive set. And with Dugtrio abandoned Gen 4, there's not as much to nail down and eliminate this Jirachi set. It does have a lot more offensive tools to contend with in the format. Power level has risen, but it can keep up. And with Iron Head, it can also disrupt the enemy greatly if they happen to be slower, which is incredibly powerful. And finally, we have Rotom. All the Rotom forms in Gen 4 are actually Electric Ghost. It was Gen 5 and onwards where they gained unique types of their own for each form. Generation 4, the Electric Ghost Rotoms are some of the most prominent defensive Pokemon you see. They have to use Rest and Sleep Talk for their healing method, which is a bit unreliable, but just off the back of their fantastic defensive ability in Levitate, cancelling out your ground weakness and just helping you out with spikes as well. Ghost typing, making this a fantastic spin blocker and a good switch into fighting types as well. And with Will-O-Wisp, you can spread burn, weaken enemies, rest talk. This can be a difficult Pokemon to break. It has pretty solid defensive stats to low HP, but high defense and a great typing to back it up. In Generation 5, defensive Pokemon are under even more pressure than they were in Gen 4. So many powerful threats were introduced in this generation and permanent weather is a mechanic that enhances many of those threats even further. But some defensive Pokemon did manage to keep up with this and operate extremely well in their fields. One of these is Runiclus, who is probably at the peak of its power in Generation 5. Runiclus is yet another Pokemon with Magic Guard, the ever-valuable ability, one of the best abilities ever, granting a complete immunity to indirect damage. Runiclus is quite a bit bulkier than Clefable, 
the previous sole user of Magic God. 110 base HP, 85 and 75, special defense and defense respectively. Runiclus is incredibly bulky and difficult to break through. It has recover, it can chip heal in the sand and the hail, and it has even calm mind to operate as a win condition. Runiclus fits on offensive teams and it can go in a more aggressive direction with life orb and trick room and stuff like that, but it also fits on really defensive bulky teams and it's one of their best walls. Runiclus does suffer against Tyranitar, who can pursue to trap it, but to be honest, it can kind of hold its own in that regard too with Focus Blast, times four super effective against Tyranitar. Now, Gliscor was already quite solid in Gen 4 as a sort of fast utility guy, but in Generation 5 it received the greatest buff of all time. Yet another one of the best abilities in the entire franchise, Poison Heal, which allows a Pokemon to heal 1 of their max HP instead of taking damage while they're poisoned. So with Toxic Orb to inflict poison on yourself on purpose, you have double the amount of chip heal that leftovers would offer and effectively a complete immunity to status because since you're already poisoned, you can't be afflicted with burn or sleep or anything. Gliscor has the fantastic ground flying type combination. It's immune to sand, it's immune to spikes, it resists various things, and it has all the utility you could ask for. It has fantastic stats. Gliscor is one of the most invincible defensive Pokemon that there is. It does have exploitable weaknesses. It's weak to water and ice, which are common. But with support from teammates, that's no big deal. In a world where rain teams are everywhere, Gastrodon is quite a good counter pick. Despite pretty poor stats, decent health, I mean 111 health is nothing to sneeze at, but low defenses, Storm Drain is the real star of the show, granting an immunity to water moves, which is what really makes Gastrodon a difficult enemy for rain teams. It's a fantastic counter pick. It's also immune to sandstorm damage, meaning it can function well in that prominent weather effect as well. It has access to recover. Scald, one of the best moves in Pokemon, which has a 30% burn chance. Fantastic way to spread status. Toxic is a fantastic utility too. Does it get refresh? No, it does not. So it is vulnerable to status. But Astrodon is a great pick in Generation 5 to improve your matchup against Rain. And it also still is a water ground type with Scald and Ice Beam, which comes in handy. It can check stuff like Dragonite and Garchomp. It can spread burn for you. It's going to come in handy, even in non-Rain matchups. Celebi still exists, folks. This is a good Pokemon in Gen 5 because of its Rain matchup as well. Resisting water, Natural Cure is always useful, and it has the benefit of pivoting. You can also just run Baton Pass for pivoting, which is a bit safer against Tyranitar. In Gen 5, if you do turn against a Tyranitar and they click Pursuit, they can still hit you on the way out, but that's not the case with Baton Pass. This is also good against Tentacruel in particular, which is a tough matchup sometimes. Also crucially has Stealth Rock. It's nice to be able to set hazards against an enemy Rapid Spinner and also force them out with Psychic and basically hard wall them. So yet another great rain counter pick and solid wall it also helps against threats like Breloom and Thunderous Theory and Keldeo. It's actually very good against Keldeo, resists both of its stabs. Tentacruel is also a chip heal king thanks to Rain Dish, granting an additional 116 heal every turn in the rain. Basically double leftovers for Tentacruel. The amount of healing this guy can generate on rain teams is absurd and it has such good utility in the form of Scald, Rapid Spin, Toxic, Toxic Spikes. You can even run Substitute and Protect to be even more annoying and have that form of counterplay against status. You of course can't be statused behind a substitute. Tentacruel is one of the most important defensive Pokemon in Gen 5. Kind of an annoying Pokemon. The passive healing gets out of control it's so difficult to nail down the guy and it handles all your hazards so it's hard to break through anything else too. Jellicent is a great fit in the Gen 5 metagame. It's not too bulky. It has modest stats with 100 health, 105 special defense, and 70 defense. But what really makes Jellicent great is it's typing water ghost and water absorb, granting water immunity and even healing when you get hit with a water move. So great into the rain matchups. Ghost typing helps out significantly against rapid spin. It's a spin blocker, which is hard to come by in Gen 5. Jellicent's probably the best one. And it also really helps you out against Keldeo. You're immune to water and immune to fighting, both of the stab types that they run. So they need like Hidden Power Grass or Ghost to be able to hit you. And then that's not stab and you got decent bulk to handle that. Jellicent also has Recover, Nightshade, Scold, Will-O-Wisp, a lot of great defensive and status moves. Taunt helps disrupt enemies. I really like Jellicent, to be honest. I like that it's got like modest stats, but a combination of traits that fit well. It's good against multiple things at once, meaning it's worth running on your team because it helps in multiple matchups for multiple purposes. Rotom Wash is very good in Gen 5 too, now being a water type, electric water, arguably even better than electric ghost as a typing. 
Uh, really great into like Garchomp, Landorus, Theory, and a lot of the common sand Pokemon. Rotom Wash does very well. Will-O-Wisp is always nice. Volt Switch for pivoting, fantastic. You can't really afford to run the Rest Talk set that was good in Gen 4. It's a bit too passive this time around. You need a bit more immediately threatening stuff. You can hit with a big stab Hydro Pump, which is nice in the rain. Maybe not so much a wall as it is like a defensive pivot because its health feels limited. It's hard to really keep it around for long, but for a short period of time, it will be a good defensive blockade against common enemies, which has its value. Zatu is one of my favorites, folks. This is a very funny Pokemon and it has the ability magic bounce yet another one of the best abilities in the game which bounces back various advantageous effects this includes status moves and even more notably hazards so if the enemy clicks stealth rock and you switch into zatu bounces back to their side of the field they just set stealth rock for you against them it's one of the worst things that can happen is getting a stealth rock bounced back so you've wasted a turn and you now are at a significant disadvantage the sheer power of magic bounce is being able to bounce back hazards it's kind of the crux of zatu's entire life because its stats are incredibly average its typing is okay but nothing to really write home about. Really it's magic bounce giving Zatu all the value in the world. Roost for healing, U-turn for pivoting. You can also run like Heat Wave to hit Ferrothorn, that's something, or Nightshade for more consistent general damage. This this Smogon set says Reflect, I suppose that's something to click to support your allies. You see Zatu on Sun teams because Sun teams really really suck against Stealth Rock, so having a direct way to block the enemy from Stealth Rocking is useful. Sun teams aren't the best of course, but Zatu is a way to support those teams. In general, if you're running rock weak Pokemon, Zatu can help a lot, like Dragonite or Curum Black or Pokemon like that. Zatu is a good choice alongside them. Latios is really the star of the show in terms of the Laddie twins in Gen 5. It's probably the best Pokemon in the entire format, but Latias does have its benefits because it has a higher special defense stat than Latios does. And that has value when you need a Pokemon with this type profile and levitate and stuff that can actually heal and be a bit sturdier than Latios can. Latias can be a nice choice on more defensive teams that want a bulkier win condition. And I thought I'd talk a bit about Blissey in Gen 5. Blissey's had a rough time because of Keldeo. Keldeo's secret sword totally annihilates Blissey, which is a problem because it hits on the physical defense side where Blissey has zero bulk whatsoever. But Blissey has been seeing a resurgence on hail teams recently because it helps with wish support and sheer bulk and utility. It also doesn't suffer from hail as much as enemies do, which is a great benefit. The object of hail teams is to be anti-meta teams and to wear down the enemy over time, usually with a stall strategy and Blissey does fit on that sort of archetype. I lied folks, there's a couple more to shout out in Gen 5. Slowbro has actually been pretty popular recently. It has Regenerator, which is a fantastic defensive ability. Restoring one third of your max health when you switch out, which is a very safe way to heal. That doesn't require you to stay in and put yourself at risk, making it one of the most powerful healing options in all of Pokemon. And these were some of the earliest examples of relevant Regenerator Pokemon. Regenerator would become more powerful in later games, but these are like the prototype Regenerator fellows. Slowbro and Amoongus. Amoongus was better when sleep was legal in Gen 5, of course. It used to be able to click Spore. Now it can't. It can at least paralyze the enemy. Amoongus is really just powerful off the back of Regenerator alone. It is occasionally seen, but the problem with Amoongus is that despite its fantastic ability and decent defensive typing too, it can't really do much beyond that. It's not very, doesn't have many things to click. Slowbro is a bit better in that department with Scald and Thunder Wave and Slack Off, which are good options. And very solid defense stat. Slowbro is really good, honestly. Amoongus, on the other hand, a bit more lacking, but still occasionally seen for its typing. Generation 6 introduced the Fairy type, which is one of the best defensive types in the game. And it also, perhaps controversially, changed Clefable from a normal type into a Fairy type, which was a significant buff. And Clefable is one of the best Pokemon in Generation 6. And honestly, it's been really powerful ever since becoming a fairy type in every generation. Even back in Gen 4 when it was a normal type, which is a worse type with less resistances and a weakness to fight, it was still one of the best defensive guys in the metagame. Even in Gen 5 it sees occasional use, but as a fairy type, Clefable skyrocketed to absolute success. Fairy types are immune to Dragon, and Dragon was previously a type with no immunities and a single resistance. So that's massive. Complete immunity to Dragons, and two very relevant resistances to Dark and Fighting. Now, fairy types are weak to Steel and Poison, but those aren't the world's most common attacking types, and it's pretty easy to run resistances or even immunities elsewhere on your team. 
a lot of stuff. Just naturally resists those types. So Clefable with a huge defensive buff. And one of the best abilities in the game, Magic Guard, is an absolute titan of Gen 6 OU. In Gen 5, Amoongus cannot use Spore, but in Gen 6 it can, and for that reason it is a really solid defensive pivot with Regenerator. Mew is here. Now, Mew was legal in Gen 5, but it wasn't used very often. However, in Gen 6, it's quite solid because it now has Defog, which is a new mechanic that can remove hazards. And it has Will-O-Wisp and Softball, which are amazing defensive tools. And it has really good natural bulk from its base, 100 stats across the board. Also has really good move pull with options like Knock Off, Toxic. It can learn any TM in the game, so you can run whatever coverage you need. Flamethrower if you wish. Even physical coverage if you want to. Very versatile Pokemon, quite solid in this metagame. Tangrowth also has Regenerator, and it is one of the most popular Regenerator users. It is even bulkier than Amoongus, stats-wise. Pretty fantastic defensive stats, to be honest. 125 defense, that's excellent. Grass typing has its uses, and with Rocky Helmet and Regenerate is a good combo, because you can rack up chip damage and heal it back simply by switching out. Now look at this utility, Sleep Powder and Knock Off on the same set. I mean... There's absolute value to that. The advantage of Amoongus over this is that it has poison typing, granting toxic immunity and the ability to get rid of toxic spikes from the field. But Tangrowth has a little bit more in the way of progress making, thanks to Knockoff. Sleep Powder is less accurate than Spore is, of course, but as a defensive Pokemon, you can be happy to miss, to be honest, and just keep clicking it till it hits. You'll be all right. Venusaur has a fantastic mega evolution in Gen 6 that becomes a more defensively leaning Pokemon, gaining the ability Thick Fat, which grants a resistance to fire and ice, canceling out your previous weakness, making this Grass Poison typing a very good neutral defensive type as a result with fewer weaknesses and way higher defensive stats. I mean, look at these. Really good stats on this. Synthesis is your form of healing, which only has 8 PP, which is quite limiting, but with your sheer bulk, your utility options in the form of toxic and sleep powder and stun. I thought I got stun spore, that's my mistake, but still. It also hits really hard with high special attack. This is a good defensive Pokemon, folks. Tornadus Therian is probably the most popular regenerator abuser in this format. Mono flying typing, very solid. Gets knockoff and U-turn, fantastic for pivoting. And with an assault vest, you can get an enhanced special defense stat. And all of your utility options here don't require non-attack options. Assault vest prevents you from using non-attack moves. That's not a problem here. Your bulk isn't the best. You have more offensively leaning stats, but the typing, the ability, the assault vest, it all creates a very difficult Pokemon to break through. You check a lot of stuff that's very important to check as well. And finally, we've got Zapdos returning to the fray. Hello again. Zapdos had a brief stint in UU in Gen 5. With access to Defog as a new utility option, it throws back the prominence in Gen 6 as a pretty solid defensive wall and utility guy. It is weak to Stealth Rock and it can't use its ability Static yet. That would be a later generation situation, but even despite that, has a good defensive typing, decent enough stats to operate defensively, and the utility of Defog as well. Plus it's got U-turn for pivoting, it's got Toxic and Thunder Wave if you need them. In Generation 7, they made a big mistake and they released this Pokemon right here, Toxapex. This might be my least favorite Pokemon of all time. It's a contender for sure, it's up there. I very much dislike Toxapex, and where I think that Swampert back in Gen 3 is the perfect example of a defensive Pokemon, this might be the worst example of defensive Pokemon. This is like what you should never do. Toxapex was given everything in the world. Regenerator is an outstanding defensive ability with a completely safe way to heal, and it has Recover on top of that. Water Poison typing is outstanding. 152 defense, 142 special defense. Usually if you have Regenerator, you're limited somehow, you got like limited you utility move pull like a Moongus or you have you know worse ish stats typing in some way Toxapex has fantastic typing fantastic stats fantastic utility moves skull toxic spikes toxic recover baneful bunker and all new protect that also poisons the enemy they went too far they gave this guy too many things back in gen 7 breaking through a Toxapex was just not very fun it was not a good time Toxapex could so often evade justice and heal all the way back to full after a couple switches and then it has a million defense, so how do you get him? There's ways to break it, you know, Cruel Dot, Choice Band, Knock Off or something. I used to use very powerful breakers in Gen 7 purely because of Toxapex. I very, very much dislike Toxapex and what it stands for and what it represents 
and also Toxapex as a person, I think, is immoral. In Gen 6, Clefable technically could use Unaware, but you couldn't use Unaware alongside Softboiled, but in Gen 7 you can, and Unaware is a fantastic new defensive ability option for Clefable. Magic Guard is still probably the more popular choice overall, and it still operates in a very similar way in Gen 6, but with Unaware, this is a good option on stall teams that need a form of counterplay against boost sweepers, which would otherwise give you big issues. Shout out to Eviola at Chansey. This is an option that existed in Gen 5 and 6. I feel like I saw it more in Gen 7 though on stall teams. Chansey is the pre-evolved form of Blessy who has worse stats, but with Eviolite, granting a defense and special defense boost. If you are not fully evolved, Chansey becomes incredibly powerful defensively and that has its merits, doesn't it? Speaking of messed up Pokemon from hell, we have Mega Sableye. This existed in Gen 6, but it got banned, rightfully. In Gen 7, it evaded justice and it exists. It has Magic Bounce on it, one of the best abilities of all time. And you know how Zatu has like no stats when it has Magic Bounce? To counteract the overpowered ability, well, they gave Sableye Mega these stats, which are considering the power of the ability and the power of the typing to Dark Ghost, only one weakness, a lot of immunities, really good defensive typing, really good defensive ability, really good move pool to recover, Will-O-Wisp, knock off, protect. Mega Sableye is so annoying, and stall teams with this with this guy on it were the bane of my existence back in the Gen 7 day. Quagsire is another popular unaware user, was used in Gen 6 too, but I feel like, once again, I saw it more in Gen 7 as a staple of stall teams, water ground typing and unaware is a good combo and it has a lot of good defensive and utility options too with recover and scold and toxic. I can't hate Quagsire too much, it's at least exploitable, it's got low stats to make up for the powerful ability, so there's ways to break through Quagsire. I think where the frustration lies is with Quagsire alongside other Pokemon that bolster a defensive game plan. But Quagsire alone is, is not too immoral. This is kind of where I have an issue with Gen 7, where offense and defense, you could say they're, they're balanced, but they're very amplified. Offensive mechanics are like, you know, beast boost and massive base attack and Z moves and these insane nukes and just incredible brute force. And then defensive mechanics are also bolstered with concepts like unaware, ignore boosts entirely, or magic guard, ignore damage entirely, or magic bounce, ignore the enemy clicking buttons. It's like very extreme on one end of the spectrum or another where I think in better meta games, offense is more reasonable and defense is more reasonable. Anyway, rant over. Here's a Pokemon I do like though, and I don't know if it counts as a wall because it doesn't have healing, but it is a defensive guy that is well designed in my opinion, Tapu Fini. It has a fantastic water fairy typing and the ability Misty Surge, which creates Misty Terrain on the field on switch in and Misty Terrain grants a complete immunity to status for all grounded Pokemon. I like Tapu Fini because it has this very powerful defensive ability and typing, but it also has no form of reliable healing, making it reasonable to eliminate. While its typing is good against certain things, it also has common weaknesses. I almost forgot to mention Zapdos, who is pretty much the same as it was in Gen 6, but now it has has Static, which is a much better ability. 30% chance that if you make contact with Zapdos, you can get paralyzed. Great way to punish such fellows as Katana. Generation 8 is the first time that the main gimmick of the franchise being Dynamax was banned in competitive singles. So without Megas or Z moves or any other sort of mechanic that deals a lot of damage, defensive Pokemon became better as a result of that. And also the addition of heavy duty boots, the best singles items since leftovers was another significant development that greatly enhanced defensive Pokemon. This is an item that grants a complete immunity to hazards, which previously were one of the best ways to pressure defensive walls with a way to punish their switch in against you. Now they can evade that completely, which is fun. So Toxapex is in Gen 8, just like it was in Gen 7, and now it can't even be pressured by hazards either. Now, Gen 8 OU does have its ardent defenders, and I have falsely maligned the metagame in the past. I'll admit to some ignorance towards the modern Gen 8 metagame. Some say it's one of the better modern metagames, but I will admit, very openly that the concept of a Toxapex wearing heavy duty boots is not something I ever want to see or look at. I don't want to ever see that. And that's the kind of thing that gives me nightmares. Boots also now enabled previously Stealth Rock weak Pokemon to become much better defensively. Zapdos no longer crippled by that 25% damage every time it comes in, enhancing it even further as a defensive defog user. Moltres, ranked in UU actually, but I remember Moltres being pretty popular when I was playing Gen 8 OU when it was current, with Flame Body and, and the ability to cancel out the previously 50% you would take from Stealth Rock on entry. 
that it totally crippled you defensively. So fire types and flying types became much better as a result of boots in the role of defensive walls. Mew benefits from boots too, as does everything, but they also gave Mew spikes as a new option. Slow King Galar is also one of the more significant new defensive Pokemon added to the game with a poison psychic typing, which doesn't look very good on the surface, but actually ends up fitting quite well in the metagame and being quite effective for what it wants to wall. Good stab options and future sight and sludge bomb to pose a bit of a threat on top of that and scald for burn chance and the bulk provided by assault vest and regenerator. This is a great wall. It can stick around for a very long time and produce value as well. I don't mind a Slow King Galar, I feel like it has a pretty exploitable typing and a limited enough move pool, but obviously many advantages in other areas. A well-rounded Pokemon and a good addition that doesn't feel too annoying. And finally, here we are in the current generation, Gen 9, where things have changed once again. Across the board, defensive mechanics have been nerfed greatly. Recover now only has 8 PP and so do all healing moves, so defensive Pokemon are not as good. They've been punished. They have been restricted. The distribution of status moves and moves like Scold and sometimes Knockoff too have also been cut significantly. Not as many progress making tools for defensive Pokemon. But they do now have the advantage of terrestrializing, allowing them to become any type they want, which has significant defensive benefits. And when I think of a defensive Pokemon in Gen 9, I think of Clod Sire, who is an alternative to Quag Sire, but with significantly higher health, bit more min-maxed stats, taking some away from special attack and speed and such, and pumping it into more useful stats. Clod Sire has two very good defensive abilities in Water Absorb and Unaware. One of the bulkiest Unaware users we have ever seen and it has fantastic utility it has recovery hazards stealth rock and spikes it has earthquake stab toxic which is way more scarce now not as many things get toxic so having it is valuable and very good terrestrialized user it can become steel type or sometimes dark type to gain psychic immunity making it an even more powerful unaware wall i like clod sire I feel like it's got exploitable weaknesses with the typing but you know great bulk and terrestrializing is a commitment. It's a resource that you have to spend, so it can turn Claude Sire into a very powerful defensive guy, but there's a cost to that as well. Garganical is another one of the most prominent defensive Pokemon introduced in Gen 9. Had a brief stint in UU. Well, not a brief stint. It's been going back and forth between OU and UU for the duration of Gen 9, but here it returns in its rightful place. Purifying Salt is a new ability exclusive to Garganical that is one of the best defensive abilities we've ever seen. It grants a complete immunity to status as a whole, including status applied through secondary effects like Scald. So you can't Toxic the guy or get a Scald burn or a Body Slam Para on it, it's just totally immune. And on top of that, it also resists Ghost randomly as an extra benefit. And it has a really good move pool. It's got Curse, it can be a win con. Salt Cure, another signature move. Applies a damage over time effect that is more powerful on steels and waters. Very difficult move to switch in against. Base rock typing, I will say, is not the best. It has fantastic stats defensively and terrestrialization is incredibly high value on Garganical. Dondozo is the ultimate wall of Gen 9 OU. Just monstrous defensive stats and unaware. This is a complete blockade against any physical sweeper ever. Doesn't matter who you are. It also gets body press, which takes advantage of its enormous defense stat. It also even gets curse, waterfall. Its move pool is very limited though. And that's what I like about Dondozo. It's, you know, insanely bulky, like stupidly so. Has incredible typing and ability, but doesn't get that many moves. It's like a true wall. It just sits there. It this might be the truest wall ever designed. It can't, you can't boost against it. You can't really kill the guy, but he, what can he do to you? Hit you with a body press. A form of relief against many of the insane offensive threats we've seen throughout the generation, some of which have gotten banned. There's always at least been Dondozo as a way to handle them. It's a stupid guy. It doesn't have any moves, but it can defend against threats. That's what it does best, and it is damn good at it. Keeping up with the pattern of powerful, unaware users in Generation 9, we have Skeledurge, the new star a Pokemon, currently UU ranked, but I think it's still a relevant presence in OU from time to time. Not only has Unaware, but a pretty solid move pool, especially compared to Dondozo. Has a worse defensive typing, I would say. Mono Water is a bit better, but Will-O-Wisp, Hex is a great combo. Torch Song as well, signature move, which raises your special attack and can also bypass a substitute because it's a sound-based move. I quite like Skeledurge. It does 
often require you to terrestrialize, but it is the highest value terror guy ever usually. Very worth terrestrializing on this. And it can still function well in its base type. It can wall enemies like Volcarona, assuming they don't have terror ground or other such things. Ting Lu is one of the bulkiest guys I've ever seen. It has 155 health, 125 defense, a solid 80 special defense, all things considered, and the ability Vessel of Ruin reduces the special attack stat of the enemy. So this guy is insanely bulky, but it at least does not have any form of immediate healing. Besides rest, which it doesn't usually use, Tinglu takes advantage of its defensive switches and its bulk by creating hazards on the field. And it's one of the best hazard setters in the game. It also at least has Whirlwind to do something, and Ruination is kind of like a Super Fang effect. A decent way to get value out of this bulky machine. I don't mind Tinglu too much, it is absurd stats wise, but at least the typing has its exploitable weaknesses. Weak to fighting, weak to water, ice, grass, common types such as this, and no form of healing. No great progress moves like knockoff or scold or even toxic. So I think that this is an example of a pretty nice defensive Pokemon design. It doesn't feel too annoying in my opinion. Gliscor deserves a bit of a shout out. It's having a huge moment in Gen 9 with all the same amazing traits it's always had, but now it can terrestrialize into a powerful type like Water or Fairy, and it even has spikes now for more value. I think it lost. No, it still has knockoff. Uh, well, this guy just has it all, doesn't it? One of the best defensive Pokemon still to this day and enhanced by Gen 9 mechanics and new moveset buffs. And finally, a shout out to Alamomola, who has had a serious success story in Gen 9. With Scald becoming a far more scarce option, Alamomola's access to Scald as a regenerator Pokemon is a huge deal. Alamomola sets itself apart from a lot of other bulky pivots with access to not only Scald, but Flip Turn, which is a new option for it, which can pivot, it's like a water type U-turn, and Wish Support, which is also more scarce now. So Alamomola has pretty solid defenses. You did see this Pokemon sometimes in previous generations, but it has become significantly better and it is a really, really strong, it's kind of the new Toxapex. Doesn't quite have as many of the options Toxapex had. Toxapex does of course still exist in Gen 9, but it's worse now because they removed Scald and Knockoff from its moveset. It's so much worse, in fact, that it's ranked in UU. Good riddance, in my opinion. So there it is, folks, a rundown of walls in every single generation and how they impact things and how each generation's mechanics have created a new environment for walls to flourish or perhaps not flourish. I did miss some, of course. There's many examples throughout the generations. I hope I gave a good general overview of each of these generations and the defensive Pokemon that define them. And thank you for watching.